Let's prep, uh, uh, come on, come on. Uh, 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 In Chicago, high school basketball is more than just a game. It's a dream that starts on the playground. Where you can carve a path to glory. Hundreds hope, few make it. These are their stories. I'm Eddie Curry, 6'11", 290-pound center, throwing with Thunderbirds. My name's Kyle Kleckner, 6'185 185-pound shooting guard from Downers Grove North High School. I'm Sean Doctor, I play for Junior High School. Point guard, I'm a junior, I'm 18 years old. The preps of Chicago Hoops. MJ made basketball famous in Chi-Town, but Chicago ball ain't never been just joy. This is just not good enough. Get it out of there. Unreal. That's money, that's money. High school basketball in Chicago is famous. Fantastic. You're going to have to shape up. You're going to have to tighten up. This is your fourth year. High school hoop is hard, Chicago. D, D, family. One, two, three. Family. Life is hard. Players come out of the Taylor homes on the south side. Hey, growing up in a Taylor, you can either be a game maker, a rapper, or a basketball player. Right. We choose to be rappers and basketball players. Can't be a game maker. I ain't got no flows like him, so I'm a basketball player. <laughs> the Wild Wild Hunnets. This is where I come from, man. This is. This is real life. That's our stove. We never had running water to even work in the tub. The toilet never flushed. Never had a working tub. This would make me want to be somebody. I don't want to live like this no more. Places you wouldn't walk through without a Bible and a blessing. There's been many nights where I just sat right here. Just sat right here in this exact spot. Praying, praying, asking God to help me do something with my life. Welcome to Chi-Town, boys. Home of prep hoops. Our journey begins now. The season is on. For the next three months, we're gonna be family with three of the best in the city. So let's ride. Eddie Curry, six foot 11, 300 pounds. Number one college recruit in the country. <laughs> the lottery if he goes pro. I'm just like any other kid. I, I really think that this is kind of early to, to know exactly what I want to do with the rest of my life. I mean, but like for the time being, it's a very good chance that I might go to the NBA and might make a career out of it. So um, I'm trying to work hard at that because that seems to be the way this, that I'm heading. But at the same time, I'm keeping my grades up and, and making sure that I take the right classes and, and I'm gonna make sure that I, I get a high school degree and everything to where if I don't play basketball in the NBA and it's not my career, that I still have something to do. On the other side of town, way, way on the other side, in the burbs, Cal Kleck. Don't let the shade or the size fool you. This white boy can ball. Smooth as the ice man's finger roll. I have a ton of basketball memories. That's pretty much every kid's dream playing high school sports just to make it downstate. And I think this year we have a real realistic sh chance at making it down there. Our team, we have such a great bond and there's so much chemistry. I mean, there's no selfishness on our team and everyone knows their role. Back on the south side, Sean Dockery, <laughs> number one junior in the city. Maybe the illest in the states. I just think about nice things, like while I'm doing this right now, while I'm in the gym, it's 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock at night, and all my other friends are not doing nothing. I'm thinking, 
that this is going to uh, benefit me long, like at the long run. I'm just thinking if I put time in right now when I'm young, I'm going to have fun when I get older. And my dream is to have, like, my mom right here, my mom's house right here, my brother house right here, my house right here, sister house. You know, family on one block. That's my dream right there. Curry, Kleckner, and Dockery. Up close, keeping it real. Keep your head up. Come on. Come on. Keep your head up. A couple of years ago, they started calling him Baby Shaq. Say hello to Eddie Curry. He's a monster. Yo, my man can't even walk through his mama's. Watch out for that doorway, player. Yo, Eddie's little nieces thinks he's a jungle gym. If I was a shorty, I'd probably crawl all over Zeus too. No! Come on. No. I'll Bring him down. No. I was taller than everybody. And at the time, uh, all the kids used to tumble and things after school and everything. And it was just something I did basically to fit in. So I taught myself how to do do different things and, and taught my body how to how to uh, do stuff like that. I mean, I really wasn't interested in football. A lot of kids play little league football, but I was too big for that. A lot of kids played small for our basketball, and I was too big for that. So I was really limited to what I could do. And it was either basketball or, or being a gymnast or baseball, but I didn't like any of that stuff. So I just uh, started flipping with my friends. Eddie starts center for the Thornwood Thunderbirds. He's only 18 and could be a top NBA draft pick. Yo, my man won't make but about three mil next year. So tell me a bit about your tattoo, sir. Uh, got this one, like, sophomore year, the truth. And I took that off for, uh, I think it was a few good men. I mean, uh, I took it off from when he said, uh, you couldn't handle the truth. That's what I, I try to, I try to uh, play like that, like people can't handle me or whatever. I got this sophomore year, when I started going with my girlfriend, um, it says Corey. And um, I don't know. <laughs> I just got that when I start going. It's beast. It's beast among men. It's a gargoyle standing on top of a basketball, and um, it, it pretty much speaks for itself. When I'm on the court, it feels like I'm the beast, and I'm um, just playing against men. Now we didn't mind him getting earrings. But we told him he could only have an earring after he was 16. Of course, he didn't wait. Like he pierced his ear itself. I did both of them once. He pierced both ears. I was quite painful. Uh, <laughs> I just, I listened to people. People said you can get some ice and then stick a needle through or whatever. And that's what I did. Stuck a needle through my ear. I think one of them swelled up on me though. And uh, I was kind of scared it was going to get infected. So I take my earring out for a while. Then they told me I could only get one, and I tried to trick them into thinking I only had one. No, I think how they found out I had an earring was uh, I went to Disney World, and they uh, drew a picture of me, and I left my earring in. They drew a picture of me with my earring in, and they asked me uh, why was the earring in. I told them that I told the people to draw it on there like that. When he came back from Disney World, I looked at that picture. I said, Eddie, uh, you were not supposed to have an earring, right? I said, uh, he said, no. He said, I don't have any ring because by that time he'd taken them out of his ear. And uh, he, I said, well, what's this on the picture? He said, uh, the lady drew the picture uh, using her imagination, what I would look like with an earring. And that's the story he stuck to. I was say double the whole fourth quarter. Eddie's boys are Jason Strait and Najib Eccles, two of the top high school ball players in the state call themselves three the hard way. Thick as brothers. Put a crate right here, milk crate right here, and then put a crate down there on the other end of the court. I mean, on the other end of the porch. And bam, that's my whole court right there. You know what I'm saying? Did it like that. Eddie was doing his thing, but he wasn't really, really producing like we knew he was able to. 
So I get, I get her on him, you know what I'm saying? I told him, man, you a punk, man. What is you doing? You know what I'm saying? You got to do your thing, man. Our relationship is real special. Um, Jason was really probably, well, Jason was the one of the first people to talk me into playing on the AU team with him. So, uh, I mean, from that point, I knew that I can trust Jason. Getting ghetto with him, telling him he wasn't nothing, and you, you got to come out hard, and you got to put in effort. And if I was your height, I'd be this, and I'd be that, and you know what I'm saying? We just made him mad, you know what I'm saying? We brought out the best of him that day. And that day, no joke, he scored 36 points and had like 14 feet, 10 rebounds. And the very first play of the game, he got a windmill dunk. Because we told him he was a punk. And he won and he won balling hard like he's supposed to. And from that day on, he ain't ever looked back. Just because I got ghetto with him that day. And um in my situation, it's hard to trust people, so, I mean, when you have somebody like that, you can call on at any time of the night, whether it be him or Najib, uh, I think that's real special. Hi, my name is Kyle Kleckner. Uh, I live in Downers Grove, Illinois, and I play basketball for Downers Grove North High School. Nothing really exciting ever really goes on here, but I got a lot of close friends here, so it makes it fun. As my mom has probably let you know, she does spoil me pretty much, and she never lets me go a day in my life without reminding me. She's always like, you guys are a little spoiled brats, but I think deep down inside that she really does enjoy doing stuff for us, because in about another six months, I'll be off to college. I try not to miss anything. I can probably count on one hand the number of games that I haven't been able to go to and it's just I've always made it a priority to make sure that I try to get to everything that he is involved in. That's a choice I've made. I've decided that I only have two children and I want to be there for everything that they do. Oh. My mom's like, you gotta clean your room up. I'm like, Ma, I mean, if, if my room was spick and span, it wouldn't be a plain old high schooler's room, so I can't, I mean, our house is clean enough. You can't, uh, Everything can't be all uh, fictional, so I gotta have a little messy. This, my mom goes crazy over this. I probably haven't touched this for ever. I'll probably clean it once a year. My mom hooks me up with some nice, uh, what's it called, some gel. I don't know, I just tell her to buy them something. Get a little nice size on the hand. Then I just gotta stick this up just right. Takes a while, actually. Put it in there. It's kind of frustrating at times, to tell you the truth. It's gotta have it sticking up for the whole day. So let's try to get a nice spike on it. Always looks different every day, but oh well. I learned this from one of my football friends, to tell you the truth. I never used to do my hair. And then they always made fun of me, so I decided to try it out. This front piece right here pisses me off every day. So it never goes up like I want it to. So I always end up spending more time on that piece alone than I do my whole head. Just gotta throw a little extra on there. He likes girls, that's his favorite thing. Cal's the man at school. John Stockton with a decent haircut. Got all the honeys waving at me. Yeah. God, yeah. I think he's so cute. He definitely got his body this year. Cal's got it all, right? Sure seems that way. He's the BMOC and dropping 20 a game. He's one of my preps. When he first came home from the hospital, and Steve held him up and talking about he giving him to the basketball guy. I cannot find a picture. When I first came home from the basketball, was, uh, you know, I used to go to this day camp, and my auntie used to work there. And she used to like basketball a lot, but I was into baseball. So it was, just, it was a program after the day camp was over where it was a program uh, that, that was small fry, it was called small fry at, at Palmer Park. 
And she used to watch it a lot. It's like, Sean, you don't you know, like basketball? I'm like, yeah, I like playing outside like that. She's like, you should, you should try to play with them. It was a lot of little guys, they were playing basketball. So I said, uh, I was playing with the coaches. I said, hmm, they're okay, but I bet my little nephew can handle them. They were like, well, how old is he? I was like, well, he's eight. That's you know, they were like, well, bring him and we'll see how he does and everything. And they bought him on. I had to beg everybody to let Sean play because his daddy was like, I don't know. They might be busters. I don't want to play. But I was like, give him a chance. And at first, I was taking him to practice. But once Steve seen how the team was and how everything was going, he was like, oh, I like this. And Steve took over. And it was, <laughs> it was just. That's, you know, it went on from there. So I came in there and had some tight little orange jeans, blue jeans on, and all the other kids had shorts on, cut off shirts. They was, they was ready to play. I came in there with some tight little orange jeans on, some gym shoes and a little shirt. I wasn't ready to play. And I stepped on the court nervous. I was never nervous that in my life. I tried to tie my shoes up. I was shaking, you know, but my auntie was just like, relax, relax, just relax and play like you're playing outside. I'm like, yeah, let me play like I'm playing outside. So I got the ball. I remember this. I want a fast break. And I'm drawing the ball towards the basket. And the guy named Chuck, he's my friend, a good friend of me now, he comes to block the shot. I turned around and do a 360 <laughs> layup, threw the ball out of the back of the rim. And Everybody started laughing. That, that moment on, I just wanted to get better. Than, I, I never wanted to be embarrassed about basketball ever again like that. So I put up for effort to practice every day and play basketball. Here's another focus on the boom in your system. Coming from the brother with the knowledge and wisdom. Going through all the mail that we got over the holidays. This stuff piles up. Where's most of this from? Uh, you got, you got, you got the fall. You got Seton Hall. You got Southern. You got Cincinnati. You got Stanford. You got Notre Dame. You got Bradley. Uh, with Duke. Notre Dame from all the schools in the Big Ten, Ohio State. It's just a. Piles and piles and piles of mail. Eighth grade is when they start sending up, and I couldn't understand. I'm like, why are they sending? He got to go to high school before he go to college. But they were sending him letters in eighth grade. I guess they knew something that we didn't know. <laughs> These are the letters from, I'm gonna say, beginning of December. These are all the letters from this month, and it's like many more downstairs, boxes and boxes. When he was young, he was always athletic. Um, he would be out across the street playing basketball, hanging with the older guys. He's always hung with the older guys in the neighborhood. And when he was real young, they didn't have the hoops, because um, we live right across the street from the grammar school. And they didn't have um, the hoops in the back. So the kids used to play ball on uh, monkey bars. So he would be out there until I make him come in playing um, playing ball on the monkey bars. You ain't tired, Dez. We just started, baby. I just love kids, making kids become adults, be responsible. Uh, I love that more than anything. Some kids we didn't, some kids still out here went the wrong way. But the majority of them, they're, they're better human beings. You know, so that's what I like. I like doing that. Making sure a kid is uh, growing up to be responsible, to take care of his, his family. The most thing I'm blessed with is this family right here. It's not basketball, it's not no girls, it's not baseball. It's the family I got. I think God blessed me with the, be the best family on earth to me. You know, I know all kids and everybody out there saying they got the best family, but this family right here, we go through everything together. They eat, drink, sleep basketball here. That's, that's all they talk about. If you want to have a conversation with somebody in here, you have to know basketball. So every now and then I'll say something. So they turn around and look at me like, she don't know what she's talking about. I probably need a book so I can learn more. How you like it, how you like it, look at me now. The FL Evia, Vada G Evia, Major Pay Your Way to Save Your Flavorful Taste. Coming up on Preps. 
Meet Cal Clay. Hi. It's the king of Dallas Grove North. You have to excuse my practice performance day because I am feeling horrible right now. Cal is the big man on campus, definitely. <laughs> Meet the Dockery family. They have a good relationship. A whole family is solid. Father and son go head to head on the hardwood. So everybody always asks me how I got to play against my son, but it's uh, Sean's going to be a man one day and he's going to have to do stuff without me, so we start right now. We play for keeps, my team don't sleep. Find out what makes a grown man cry. Oh, I don't know where it came from, man. I tried to stop it, but it just kept coming. Like I said, I don't think I've never a father and son ever played against each other on the high school level. I wanted to win, like I said. Just very, very emotional. The next time on Preps. I'm the king of the black top, hooping half court shots. I come correct and stats to whack compared to the points that I drop. I play to win and I'm playing for keeps. In the gym of 21 on the streets, I'ma keep bringing the heat, mad skill. My squad runs circles around your team. I'm keeping my game tight and fulfilling my fallen dreams. Set up shop, correct it, never reject it. The ball game is mine and you will respect it. We play for keeps, my team don't sleep. Leave you choking from the dust that propels from my feet, mad skill. My squad is letting you know the deal. We got mad game for real. We play for keeps, my team don't sleep Leave you choking from the dust that propels from my feet Mad skill, my squad is letting you know the deal We got that game for real, real Let's prep, come on We prep, yeah, come on, come on Let's prep, come on, come on Let's prep, let's prep